Hello Year 7, it's Miss Thika here. I know some of you aren't taught by me at school and you might have a different history teacher, uh, but that doesn't matter. You can use these lessons um, just the same, even if I don't teach you normally. What I've decided to do um, for at least the next couple of weeks is I'm going to start um, recording myself going over some of the lessons that you would have done if you were in school. I know I have set uh, work for you anyway and um, your teachers will have set you um, some work to do independently but I know I've got a little bit of feedback from um, some of the year sevens that I teach um, that have said that they're starting to come to the end of their activity booklets now which is really good well done um, so I've decided instead of making more activity booklets for you to do um, I'll try to put some YouTube videos on of me going through the regular lessons uh, at least for the next couple of weeks um, and we'll see how people um, get on with that so as I've said even if I'm not your regular teacher it doesn't matter you can follow along with these lessons anyway so for the next couple of weeks we are going to be looking at medieval England. We're going to be thinking about some of the problems that people faced in medieval England and then we are going to be moving on to look at some um, of the important kings and queens from this time period and the changes that they made. So what you will need for these YouTube lessons um, is some paper because you will be um, making some notes exactly the same as what you would do in a regular lesson. So this can be just normal lined paper or if you did manage to um, pinch an exercise book or two before school broke up, then just use that. So today we are thinking about the role of the Roman Catholic Church in medieval England and we are thinking about the problems of the Roman Catholic Church and why the people um, of medieval England were starting to become really fed up with the Roman Catholic Church. So just the same as if we were in a regular lesson, I'd like you to write that down as your title. Why were people becoming fed up with the Roman Catholic Church? So write that down for me, please. As well, with this being a YouTube video, if you find that I talk a little bit fast or you need to slow things down, obviously don't forget that you can pause it as well so you can go through this at your own pace. So the first thing we're going to think about um, is religion. What is religion? Why are some people um, religious. So I want you to pause this video for uh, 30 seconds and just have a think what would be your definition of religion and why do you think that some people um, are religious today? Right, okay, so hopefully you've had a think about that. Normally we would spend a little bit of time um, in class chatting about that, but obviously we can't. Um, so religion and why people um, choose to, to be religious uh, is quite complicated really because there are lots of different types of religion um, in society today. Um, if you are religious you tend to follow um, a certain set of rules or guidelines or aims, you try to live your life a certain way. Um, deemed by by the principles and the aims that are specific to your religion so christianity judaism hinduism sikhism um all of them have have different aims and different principles some people uh choose to be religious uh, some people um you can convert and and become religious um as you get older when you grow up um or some people are born into religious families and then they decide to stick with their religion um throughout all of their life um but some people decide to become religious because they feel like it gives them maybe a sense of purpose it makes them a better person or um it makes some people feel better that um there's a, a higher power that is maybe going to um help us uh, after we die so carrying on thinking about what religion is or what religion was today we're focusing specifically um on the roman catholic church um and christianity so same as what we've just done what i would like you to do is i'd like you to think 
what would you expect a priest to be like? So if you could bullet point um, some ideas down on your piece of paper, what sort of characteristics would you associate with a priest? So, for example, um, the way I normally explain this is if you can think back to primary school, which wasn't that long ago because she's still only in year seven, think back to... Um, the priest or the vicar that might maybe come into assemblies and might maybe sing with you what sort of characteristics could you think of him or her um what is the main role of church today so what sort of things might your local church do for your village or your area um, and in what ways does the church um help people so same again pause this video for two minutes and jot down some ideas Okay, so hopefully you managed to get some bullet points down. If not, I've got some um, little bits that you could um, add to your bullet points or your mind map. So the main role um, of a priest or someone who uh, works the Catholic Church, um, priests are there for, for people to speak to uh, when people are feeling sad or worried. They feel like they maybe need to um, connect to God. They would go to their... Um, local church uh, and speak to their priest um sometimes people feel like this makes them them feel better you know if you've ever heard of that expression getting something off your chest or like lifting the weight of the world off your shoulders um people often find that if you speak to um someone of religion that it gives you that sense that oh i feel much better now because i've spoken to someone about that but that's not just what priests do um priests raise money uh, for several different charities and church fundraising events. Um, churches often play a big role um, within education as well within our country but also um, some priests go abroad and they visit the poorest people in the world um, and they do um, a lot of work for um, third world countries um, and things like that. So priests, even if you aren't religious, um, priests still do play quite a big role um, in our society today. However, having said that, we are not thinking about the role of the church today within this lesson. We are thinking about the role of the Roman Catholic Church in medieval times. And that was very different from some of the um, points that I have just explained there. So if you lived in medieval England or medieval Europe for that fact, you were probably Roman Catholic. That is what the vast majority of people were um, during this time period. The Roman Catholic um, religion had been around for many, many years um, and it was, it was passed down so that all of society generally uh, were Roman Catholic. The Roman Catholic Church, like this picture here, your local church would play a huge part in your daily life if you um, were someone that lived in medieval England. For the vast majority um, of people, their local church and um, their religion was probably the most important um, part or aspect uh, of their life. Um, people's entire lives revolved around the Roman Catholic Church um, it was almost sort of a sense of what they would call cradle to grave care. So as soon as you were born, you were baptised by a local priest. Later down the line, you'd be confirmed. If you wanted to get married, which people did back then, um, if you weren't married, um, that could make life quite difficult for you. Uh, your local priest would marry you. Um, and then again, if you had babies, your priest would help in that respect. And when you got older and when you got sick, you would speak to your local priest, he would read your last rites and then he would bury you. So the church wasn't just something that, you know, people occasionally visited their local church. People went all the time. So it played a huge role um, in medieval society. However, during the time period that we're going to be thinking about, um, which is around about the uh, early 1500s, 
some people were starting to get really annoyed with some aspects of the medieval church and some people were starting to call for changes to the medieval church um, and that is what we are starting to think about uh, today. So I'd like you to set this out in your book, well, however you like, really. Um, you can do it as a big mind map or you could do it as bullet points. I don't mind um, how you set it out. Everybody is going to record at least four problems. But if you would like to, you could also write about problem number five, um, which is an, an extra problem. It's a little bit extra detail. So you could set it out like this if you want to. Problem one, two, three, four, and then leave a bit of extra room for problem five if you wanted to, um, or just set it out with the first four. You can bullet point it or do it as a mind map and then maybe do some little symbols um, and colour them in later on. How we're going to do it is I am going to read the information out to you um, and then I would like you to pause me go back to your book um, and write some key points down. I've either made bold or made, uh, I might have underlined them or made them red, some really key words for this topic that I'd like you to write down um, as well for me, please. So as I've said, everyone's going to write down about the first four problems and then there is an extra fifth problem um, if you would like to add that down. So problem number one, money. Probably a lot of people would think that money isn't a problem. Um, but for the Roman Catholic Church, they were heavily criticised due to money. So one of the biggest problems with the Roman Catholic Church in the medieval times was money. The Catholic Church was very wealthy and many of the church activities were based on gaining money. This affected the relationship between the people and the church badly as it meant that rich people could buy their way into heaven. This was something really controversial. You don't know what controversial means. It means it's something that not everybody agrees with. It's kind of a bit like, mm, should you really do that? Um, we'll come back to buying your way into heaven later on because that's another specific problem. But certainly if you were rich in medieval times, um, the Roman Catholic Church would offer you a lot more support than it would for poorer people. Rich families could buy good jobs for their sons in the Catholic Church. If you worked in a church, that meant that your son would go to heaven. This was known as simony and it was a sin. Um, that if something's a sin, that means it's bad, it goes against God. So technically, the church isn't actually supposed to do this, but they did it anyway because they kept the money um, and a lot of the priests actually lined their own pockets with money from um, local uh, people who would want to, to buy their way into heaven. Um, however, a peasant had to pay for a child to be christened, they had to pay to get married and they had to pay to bury someone of their family in a graveyard. At the end of each service, the priest would expect the peasants to donate money. What's really important to remember, and if you can remember before we broke up, um, we talked about this, um, particularly if you're in my class, peasants in medieval England were exceptionally poor. Um, a lot of them were subsistence farmers, which means that you just grow enough food to basically keep your family alive. A lot of them didn't make very much profit. Um, so if they didn't have any money to donate, then sometimes they were asked to donate food or anything that they had to give to the church. So um, for a lot of peasants, they felt like they had no choice but to give their local priest anything that they could possibly give them. Or it meant that maybe they wouldn't be able... Um, to join in with the local service and a lot of peasants were worried that if they didn't go to their church services then they would burn in hell so this was really frightening for a lot of poor people um, so money is your first problem so pause me now and then add some of those key bits to your mind map please and then we'll move on to the second one problem two power in medieval times, the Roman Catholic Church was all powerful. A priest had enormous power over their village and their locality, so the people that lived within their area. The local population viewed their priest as their passport to heaven because they'd been taught this from birth. 
Peasants were pressured to attend the church and to help their church in any way they could because they were fearful that if they upset their priest, then they might go to hell. Keeping your priest happy was seen as a green light to go into heaven. There was no other way. The Catholic Church guarded its position and anybody who went against the church was labelled a heretic and burnt at the stake. So that's your key word here. I'd like to make sure you get that down. So I think when I teach this lesson in school, quite a common question that students tend to ask me or something that students tend to say is, well, why did the peasants believe them? Why would the peasants not just stop going to church? Why would they just not stop giving the church money? What you've got to remember is during this time, peasants had no real formal education. If you had no education, you don't really know any different. And if you've been taught something from birth and you don't know anything else, then you do just believe that. So it, it was almost a, a type of, of scaremongering. Everything that the church was saying, it kept the peasants in line. It kept the, the church rich and the peasants poor doing what they were told. Um, and there was no other way about it. If you wanted to go to heaven, which everybody did because they were so frightened of the awful stories they'd heard about hell, then they would do whatever they could to make sure they got into heaven. One of the worst things that you could be labelled as was um, a heretic or you could be excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church, which was very, very serious. This essentially meant that you went against the church um, you would upset God, uh, and if you were found guilty of heresy and being a heretic, then one of the common punishments um, was being burned at uh, the stake. Number three, relics. Another big problem of the Roman Catholic Church was the sale of relics. So hopefully you can see this little picture up at the top. Um, if you can, maybe try to zoom in in this video. I know I can't zoom in anymore or it'll cut the video off. But you should hopefully be able to see what that picture is. A relic can be absolutely anything. A relic could be a piece of straw, a bit of hay, a white feather, um, a little bit of wood, which is what that is in there. Um, and they were sold to people. However... They were sold under a lie. If you bought um, a relic from your priest, your priest would tell you that that thing, whatever it is you've bought, that feather or that bit of wood, they would sell it to you saying that that had been near to Jesus. So, for example, people would sell pieces of wood, like in this glass vial here, and they would say that that wood has come directly from the cross that Jesus was crucified on. It hadn't. It's a lie. But people, uh, peasants, believed it because they believed everything their priest said. Um, so a lot of peasants would, would save up everything they could to go to their priest and to buy a relic. The money raised through the sale of relics went straight to the church and to the Pope as well. Remember, um, the Pope is the head of the Roman Catholic Church. These holy relics were very popular as the people saw their purchase as a way of pleasing God. It also showed that you honoured him by spending your money on relic, relics associated with his son. But again, this is actually just another way of abusing the poorest people in society and getting money out of them. And it's fraud, really. It's selling something um, under false pretenses. Um, the relics weren't actually what the priests were selling them as, um, but it was just another way to make quick money. So number four, this should be your last one unless you want to do number five, which is your challenge. Number four, indulgences. So this um, is uh, quite an important one because this kickstarts some major change that we see um, in the early 1500s. The sale of indulgences angered many, many people. An indulgence was basically a certificate or a piece of paper that were produced in bulk. If you make something in bulk, that means that you make lots of it. 
These were pre-signed by people of the church. So it was a piece of paper that had um, someone's signature at the bottom who was important within the church. It might be the Pope um, or it might be bishops, that kind of thing. And it forgave a person's sins and it gave you access to heaven. So basically... If you knew that you had sinned, if you knew that you had done something wrong that God might be upset for, uh, upset at what you had done, you would need to wait until a pardoner was in your area and a pardoner worked for the church and they sold indulgences. You would buy um, this certificate, remember that's what an indulgence is, you would buy this and you would believe that by buying this piece of paper that everything you had done wrong it would be forgotten, it would wash away your sins, and that when you die, you could go to heaven. However, the church wanted to make even more money from this. This was later expanded to allow people to buy an indulgence for a dead relative who might be in hell and to relieve that relative of their sins. So now you didn't just need to buy indulgences for yourself, you could now buy indulgences for someone that you loved that had died, just in case you were worried that they might be in hell. So again, this is another really sneaky way of the Roman Catholic Church gaining money out of some of the poorest people um, within society. So if you just want to do four, then that is um, all four done. But I will go over the last one if you want to do the challenge one. So problem number five, this is our challenge problem. This is known as pluralism. If you think pluralism, that's a bit of an unusual name. Well, just think to um, English, what is a plural? A plural is more than one of something. So this is essentially what this is. Pluralism was a crime. So legally, priest sh priests should not have been doing this, but they did it anyway. So pluralism was a crime, but it was not uncommon for members of the church to do this. Pluralism means that a priest can look after more than one church in two completely different areas. This allowed them to make more money as they had more people as members of their clergy. They could hold more events and therefore take more money as donations. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, you know, what's wrong with a priest having more than one church? Well, let's put it this way. If you were a medieval peasant and you lived in Barnard Castle, you might maybe go to your local church, um, let's say if you were really worried that someone you know um, maybe might die, you would need your local priest to be there to help them sort of pass over to the other side. But if your local priest is also running the church in Stainedrop, if you go to your church and your priest isn't there, well, what are you going to do? You don't have a mobile phone to call them. You can't drop him an email. He's gone. He's in, he's in the next village, next town. By the time it takes you to walk or to get to the next area, you know, something terrible might have happened and that member of your family or that person you might know might have died without having their last rites being read and for you as a, a medieval um catholic that would be just awful for you um so it, it was bad for the people at the time in terms it was bad for the peasants but it was very good for the priests because as i've said they're able to make more money in donations because they're effectively collecting from two different villages and they're not supposed to do that. It was illegal. A priest was only allowed to hold one post at a time. They were meant to fully dedicate themselves to one position in one church um, and not spread about in many different areas. In addition, absenteeism was a crime. Absenteeism um, meant that the churchman needed to live in his parish. If you are absent from school, that means you're not in. So absenteeism was a crime. Um, obviously, if you own two different churches, you're going to have to split your time, aren't you? But technically, it's illegal to leave your church. So by holding more than one post, the priest would not only be committing pluralism, which was a crime, they'd also be committing absenteeism by leaving their church to go to the other one. On. But again, a lot of the church, a lot of the priests did this because they were able to collect more money. So hopefully you um, 
have been able to make notes on at least those four problems um, of the Roman Catholic Church in medieval times, but maybe he did five as well. Let's think back quickly to what we were talking about at the start of the lesson in terms of the role of religion, the role of priests, what the church does today, how the church helps society today. Are you surprised at anything that we've just been talking about now, the church in medieval times? Just have a quick think about how the two um, compare. And last thing uh, that I would like you to do, I would like you to consider out of the problems that you've um, uh, that you've managed to, to get down today, which do you think was the biggest problem? So if we think back, problem number one, money. Problem number two, power. Problem number three, the sale of relics. Then the sale of indulgences. And then finally, the challenge one was pluralism. So if you can, I'd like you to write me down a short little peel paragraph, point, evidence, explain, then link back. What do you think was the biggest problem with the Roman Catholic Church within this time period? So use this sentence starter if you're not feeling sure. I think the biggest problem with the Roman Catholic Church in Tudor times was, and because, make sure you're giving specific evidence. Don't just put things like, it's bad because they took money make sure you're using some of those key terms that we were talking about earlier on today like heretic relic excommunicated indulgence pluralism absenteeism try to use some of those key words for me please and that is the end um of the first lesson um that we will be covering over the next couple of weeks to do with medieval england um religion and medieval monarchs as well.